Are you guys awake today? What time did you guys go to sleep? First day camp? Did you? 10, 9 40. 2, two o'clock. Wow. All right. Everyone, mark that guy. He's not going to do very well today. Um, so, you guys know me. I'm Jared. And we're going through the Psalms. And I'm really excited about today. Yesterday, uh, what did we talk about? Do you guys remember? Go for it. Yeah, you. Okay. What else did we talk about? Psalm 2. Yeah, why the rage? Yeah, yeah. I have candy in this bag over here, so if you answer, you can go get some. Go for it. You can go get some. What else? I see a hand back there. Yeah. Yeah, why do, why, do, why do we rage against the Lord? Why do, we, why do people hate the Lord? Yeah, you can go get something. Um, saw that hand for real quick, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about how the world and culture um, can just come for us. And they're going to hate us because we, they hate Christ. And we love Christ, right? And so we talked about how um, ultimately we're to abide in the Lord. Go for it. One more. Thing. Right here. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah, the idea of abiding still. Yeah, go for it. So we talked about Psalm 2, and to, uh, again, we talked about what it means to abide in the Lord, right? To, to trust in the Lord. And where do you put your ultimate trust, right? That's kind of where we ended yesterday. And today, we're going to be talking about Psalm 19, all right? So open up your Bibles to Psalm 19. <clears throat> And I'm going to read it for us. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them, he has set a tent for the sun which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of, end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter than also the honey dripping from the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned in keeping them. There is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Can you guys think of the most satisfying thing in your life? What would you say that is? It could, be, it could be anything. It could be food, a show, a movie. It could be anything. Give me some answers. Yeah, cleaning the pool is kind of satisfying. Uh, right here. Go for it. <laughs> the jingling of the lanyard. Yeah. <laughs> really? Like sticking his fingers in jello. When you beat your brother? All right. In, in any game. Anyone else? What was it? Wow. That's, pretty, that's a good answer. Anybody else? Yeah. 
Slime? <laughs> like, playing with slime or eating it? All right, I'm just making sure. Well, my wife just did that. My wife's not a reader. And she just read this book called Even Exile. And it's about, quickly, it's about how um, girls and women are created fundamentally with superpowers, basically. Like, can they, I mean, they have the ability to bring life into the world. And how today's culture tries to destroy that superpower and tries to destroy the role of women in the world. It's a really good book. She read it in one sitting. She doesn't usually do that, but that, it is pretty satisfying when you can. Anybody else? Nailing a piano piece. Nailing a piano piece. That's true. Being baptized. Yeah, being baptized. All these are great answers. You, and you guys are very talkative. I appreciate it. You, one more? Did you have your hand up? No? Okay. So <clears throat> I'll share with mine. Recently, I know I talked about it. Yes, oh, the Obi Wan Kenobi show. Let me tell you, I was a child again, like legitimately. Has anybody seen it? Right? All right. So it's, it's already out. All six episodes are out. I'm just, I don't know if I should spoil it for people. Does anybody want to see it? Dang it. You're not letting me talk about it. All right. How about those people have to leave? <laughs> yeah. No, I won't let you guys leave. But... I, I won't, I'll share a little bit without giving like the awesomeness away. I mean, you, you know it's coming that to, like in the show, Obi-Wan and Darth Vader, they're, they're meant to fight. And when that fight scene happened, I've got to tell you, man, I was, I was legitimately screaming in my, in my house and my wife ran out and she was like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, it's happening. It's happening right now. And she was like, you're such a weirdo. But I, that was like super satisfying. Like I was waiting for like Ewan McGregor to come back and Hayden Christensen and they had this fight. It was awesome. So that's probably one of mine. It's not very spiritual, but I thought it was awesome. But friends, I, I would like to submit to you that God's word is our lifeline to God. Right. And this is what this psalm is saying. This is what is most satisfying. Another way to say it, if you leave with anything today and you have anything kind of meditating in your heart, abide in God's word so that you abide in God. Right from the beginning of this psalm, we see that God wants us to know him and he wants us to know him through his creation. That's the first six verses here. He gives us kind of this. A uh, heavenly description, the psalmist gives us this heavenly description of creation. You know, the heavens declare the glory of God and, sky, and the sky above proclaim his handiwork. So this idea that creation is itself speaking to us, telling us that God reigns. He's real and he's true and he is the ultimate reality for us. That he's awesome and mighty in power and he has created all things and they're telling us. And day to day pours out speech and the night reveals knowledge. He, it's this kind of continual. It, the trees blow in the wind and they speak to us. The, I don't know if you guys know this, but stars in the sky, the kind of like gas blobs that we see and they look like stars. They, they have a frequency. They kind of like shake and they glisten and they have a sound to them and they declare that there's a creator. That's, this is like science. <laughs> this is true. And so he goes on there. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the ends of the world and them has set a tent for the sun. Everything, everything that is created, everything that does not even have a voice, actually does speak the reality of who God is as creator. It's glorious. It's wonderful. This is, uh, you know, Paul echoes these words in the beginning of Romans that, you know, all of creation is here and we are without excuse that God is real and he reigns. Which comes out, <clears throat> hello? Doo -doo -doo -doo. I think this died. All right, Graham, if I go over, it's because this died. <laughs> so
So I'll keep going, and I'm going to be really loud. Thanks, Rita. Oh, I'll try my best. So all of these things are happening. Creation is, is here, and it proclaims the reality of Jesus. But even more than creation, we have something directly from God. We have ge like general revelation, but we have this amazing revelation. It's called the Bible, and, and David is so enamored by it. And this is the second part of this psalm, starting in verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is, Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. He continues, like, right here we have kind of this message from David, and six times he says, of the Lord, the law of the Lord, the testimony of the Lord, and verse 8, the precepts of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. You're my superhero, bud. And so he's, he says all these things, of the Lord, of the Lord. And he uses it six times. And in verse 9, the fear of the Lord, the precepts of the Lord. This is, this is the creator. This is Yahweh, guys. This is, this is the one who's, who came to make a way for us. The God who knows all things that have ever been and ever will be and who understands perfectly how everything operates in the universe. From galaxies to subatomic energy. That is the Lord. The God and this God has spoken with a law and with testimonies and precepts and commandments and ordinances. And the New Testament says this. Who can... For, for Candy, who can, who can say the Chehi's verse this week? You guys know Chehi's verse this week? Right? What, where's it from? 2 Timothy chapter... Yeah, 3. Go for it. Yeah, 2 Timothy chapter 3. All scripture is inspired by God and is profitable. We're to abide in this. Abide in the word. Peter says it in 2 Peter. No prophecy of scripture is a matter of its own interpretation because no prophecy <clears throat> ever came by the impulse of man. But men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. This is the Holy Scriptures. This is the Bible. This is the miracle of this. So if there's anything you need to know, the Bible and the words of the Lord have benefits for us. They have a great effect on our lives. It's better for us than anything you would ever watch or listen to. Any newspaper or magazine or novel or textbook or psychology or the theology book, anything, television, radio, whatever it is, this has astronomically more benefits for you and me. The scriptures are the word of God. God understands you better than anyone else. He knows you, how you and I work and how people are the way they are. And he knows what affects them. God understands society and groups perfectly. God knows all facts about the world. God knows the future and how everything will come out in the end. God is wiser than any wise writer. God is more caring than any counselor and is more creative than any artist. It simply is that God says and what he says will be more useful to us than anything else. And he provides his, the Bible for us. He provides his word. So I told you there are some benefits. You're like, what are these benefits? What are these benefits? I see immense value in God's word for us. And so I would say the first part of verse 10 here in this chapter in Psalm 19 and the last part in 11, we see this most clearly. David says first in 10, 
verse 10, that the words of God are more to be desired than gold, even much fine gold. And then at the end of 11, in keeping them, there is a great reward. If you have a choice between the word of God and Obi-Wan Kenobi, right, for me, or in the psalm, if you have the choice between the word of God and gold, or even much gold, or even much fine gold, it should always go back to the word of God. The point is plain, the benefits of knowing and doing the word of God are greater than 10,000 times anything else. Anything. Think of all the money in the world that you could get and that, that could be yours. The Bible is better, much better, clearly, def definitively better. Why? Because it communicates the truth of God. It communicates his character to us. It shows us who he is. And so, these benefits, this great reward we see in verse 11. That verse 11 is talking about that meditating on the Bible is so much better than gold. Abiding in God's word is so much better than gold. It seems to me that David can boil down what this looks like in maybe three ways. Life, wisdom, and happiness. The God and his word are key for a victorious life. And what's interesting all the time is God uses things that we would think are so insignificant to make his point true. What I mean is he makes the weak to be strong. If you want to be first, you must be last. If you want to live, you must lose your life. This is the wisdom of God. And so the benefit first is of life. David mentions this because it's the basis of everything else. In verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. An another way to say it is restoring life. Life is either non-existent or it is in jeopardy. Like we talked about yesterday, the backdrop of the Bible is hell and condemnation. Right? Where none of us are neutral. None of us are like in the middle, be like, well, I could take God either way, it's cool. I don't have any problems with God. He, you know, he doesn't have any. No, we are cosmic enemies before we come to know and accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. And so I say this to my students at, at youth group all the time at our church. You have two problems before Jesus, before Jesus impacts your life. You're dead and you need life, and you're guilty and you need forgiveness. Two problems. And there's only one person who can solve that. It's Jesus, the Lord. And Jesus says this, you, you want to come to know me, abide in my word. You want to come to know this God of the Bible who has come to save wretched sinners, abide in the word. Know it deeply. Meditate on it. Jesus says this as much when he's in the wilderness. When he says, man shall not live on bread alone. When Satan tries to tempt him. He's like, yo, you're hungry, right? You've been out here a long time. Turn that stone to bread. It's cool. He's fine. He says, no. Then they go on the temple. He's like, surely, I mean, surely the son of God, you throw yourself off the side of this temple. The angels will come and save you. He's like, depart from me. Man shall not live on bread alone. This is, this is the reality for, for us. Abide in God's word so that you may abide in God. 
Spiritual healthiness comes from the word, just like food is healthy for your body. But the word of God gives spiritual life. This is everything. You cannot maintain a vibrant life in God if you neglect God's word. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. It's, it's this idea. You guys know Psalm 42. Psalm 42, it's a lot of songs written out, you know, as the deer. This is really nice melody. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You guys know this song? I grew up with this song. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. That song is really nice. I don't think it captures the reality of the psalm. Psalm 42 is more like this. I'm dying! It's like this frantic deer, and he's like, I have no, I have no water. I'm going I'm go, I'm to die of thirst. And the only thing that's going to quench it is God. That is the reality that we're in. So the benefit of wisdom we see in the second half of verse 7. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. A wise person is a person whose life makes sense in the light of reality. So an example is self-denial will look foolish to the world. Rejection of much fine gold in favor of a dusty book will look foolish to the world. But it is wisdom. It is wisdom. And where there is light of reality shining, there the Lord is. Because as we know from John's writing, that the world is cast into darkness. And there is no darkness in God. He gives wisdom to those who follow him. And this is the benefits. You want to be wise. Read God's word. The commandment of the Lord gives light to the eyes. The testimony of the Lord makes wise the simple. Wisdom is a life that makes sense in the light of reality. The culture in the world will tell you that you should do the opposite all the time, all the time. Do the opposite of the thing that you know that you should do because that's better. Truly, that, that's what they'll say, that's better. It's wrong. And lastly, the, the word of God is the, best, is the best source of deepest and lasting joy. This comes out of two places. In verse 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. And at the end of verse 10, the ordinance of the Lord sweeter than the honey, than drippings of a honeycomb. Have you guys ever eaten from a honeycomb? Like just bit into it? Yeah. That's, that's the thing that David, the sweetest thing he could think of when he wrote this. He was like just munching into a honeycomb. This, it, the Bible is sweeter and better. Better. This is the experience God offers to us in all of his word. And so when you leave here today, may he increase your confidence in this book. That is the very word of God. And may that persuade you that you should abide and meditate on it daily. Following it to the greatest reward, as Paul says, the imperishable wreath that is God. That is Jesus. Greater than much fine gold. And may you discover every day the benefits of life and wisdom. And joy. And as you read it. It will remind you of the life-giving Jesus, the one who makes us wise and happy in God. In all of life's circumstances, friends, let us abide in God's word so that we can abide in God. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you and we thank you. We thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for, for Jesus, your son. And... Um, I think as, as the hymn writer, Hudson Pope, puts it, make the book live to me, O Lord. 
Show me yourself within your word and show me myself and show me my Savior. And may the book live to me. Amen. Thank you, guys.